The next mechanism of enzyme regulation that we're going to focus on is known as proteolytic activation or proteolytic cleavage or sometimes known as proteolysis. Now, what exactly is this process of proteolysis? Well, sometimes our cell produce enzymes initially in their inactive form. And these inactive enzymes, precursor enzymes, are known as proenzymes or zymogens. And we'll see many different examples in just a moment. Now, to actually activate these enzymes, we have to basically cleave the enzymes as specific peptide bonds. So sometimes we cleave one peptide bond, sometimes we cleave many peptide bonds. But the end result is the same exact. When our zymogen undergoes proteolytic activation, proteolytic cleavage by some type of protease, we basically produce the fully functional form of that enzyme. Now, when we discussed the process of phosphorylation, we said that only those enzymes and proteins that are found inside our cells can actually be controlled via the process of phosphorylation. And that's because phosphorylation actually requires the presence of ATP. And ATP molecules are found abundantly only inside our cells. So that means phosphorylation can control only those enzymes and proteins which exist inside our cells. On the other hand, unlike phosphorylation, proteolytic activation does not require ATP. And what that means, those enzymes and proteins which are found outside our cells in the extracellular environment can readily undergo the process of proteolytic activation. Now, unlike allosteric regulation and covalent modifications such as phosphorylation, which can take place many times on any given enzyme, when a zymogen undergoes proteolytic activation, it will only undergo this process once in the lifetime of that enzyme. So, once again, proteolytic activation does not require ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and so it can readily take place outside the cells. In addition, enzymatic proteolysis only occurs once in the lifetime of that enzyme. Now, the next question I want to explore is, what are some examples of enzymes, biological proteins found inside our body that utilize the process of proteolytic activation? So, I've listed six different categories, six different types of enzymes. So, category one and two we're going to focus on in much more detail in the next several lectures. And three to six, we're going to focus briefly only in this lecture. So let's begin with one, digestive enzymes. So whenever we ingest different types of food particles, we ingest these macromolecules, so proteins, carbohydrates, lipids. And it's the function of these digestive enzymes to basically break down these large macromolecules into smaller food particles that can be ingested by the individual cells. And these digestive enzymes are initially created in their zymogen form. And that's important because we don't want the digestive enzymes to be activated at all times. We only want to activate these zymogens, these digestive enzymes, when we're actually digesting, when we actually eat the food. So we have these two organs. We have the pancreas and the stomach that basically synthesize a variety of different types of zymogens. And to activate these uh, zymogens, we have to undergo the process of proteolytic cleavage, proteolytic activation. And only then when we activate these zymogens can these enzymes actually function and digest, break down all the different types of macromolecules that we ingest into our body. Now, some examples of digestive enzymes in their zymogen form are listed on the board. So we have trypsinogen, which is the zymogen form of trypsin. We have chymotrypsinogen, which is the zymogen form of chymotrypsin. We have pepsinogen, we have proelastase, and we have procarboxypeptidase. And again, we'll talk about these in much more detail in the next two or three lectures. Now let's move on to the blood clotting enzyme. So inside our body, we have the process we call the blood clot cascade. And what this basically involves is 
the proteolytic activation of many different types of zymogens into many different types of active enzymes which basically help us produce those proteins which are involved in creating the clog when for example there's some type of trauma to blood vessel inside our body so when we experience trauma or some type of cut to the blood vessels our body initiates a response that involves a cascade of proteolytic cleavages that ultimately produces enzymes and proteins which are responsible for basically sealing off that cut in that trauma area now one example that we're going to look at in the next several lectures is prothrombin. This is a very important zymogen that is activated into the thrombin which basically is needed to produce those fibrin molecules that essentially form that clog. Now let's discuss 3, 4, 5, and 6. So we have hormonal enzymes, we have a process known as apoptosis or programmed cell death, we have a very important fibrous protein that is found in bone and skin basically that is a component of the extracellular environment known as collagen and then we're going to briefly look at developmental and remodeling processes so number three there are many hormones inside our body that are examples of zymogens and these zymogens must be activated via proteolytic activation and these hormones are known as prohormones. So one example of such a hormone that is activated via proteolytic activation is insulin. So Many hormones are synthesized in their zymogen form and must be activated via the process of proteolytic cleavage. And one common example is insulin. And this is the hormone that is basically used to regulate the glucose level, the sugar level in our blood. So our cells first synthesize insulin in the pre-pro-insulin form. And pre-pro-insulin must undergo a single proteolytic cleavage at a single side to basically produce pro-insulin. But pro-insulin is not yet a fully functional enzyme. Pro-insulin then undergoes two proteolytic cleavages to essentially form the active form known as insulin. And only then can insulin actually elicit its response. Number four, the process of apoptosis. And we spoke about this process in detail when we discussed biology. So we said that apoptosis is known as programmed cell death. This is basically when a set of special enzymes initiate the process of cell death. Now, why would we ever want to actually kill off our cells? What, well, one reason if is, if, if, um, is if our cell is infected by some type of pathogen. If we have an infected cell, we don't want that infected cell to infect other healthy cells, and so we want to kill off that cell. And this is the process that helps us basically kill off that cell. Also, when the embryo is developing, sometimes we actually want to kill off certain cells in a certain area. For instance, when we develop the fingers and the toes to actually develop these digits, we have to destroy the cells in between these areas to basically go from this to this. And this process is a result of apoptosis. So our cells synthesize these zymogens we call procaspases. And these procaspases undergo proteolytic activation to form their active form caspases. And the caspases are these enzymes responsible for activating the process of apoptosis. And again, we want to undergo apoptosis in one of two instances. If we have infected cells or if we want to stimulate the proper embryo biological development in that developing embryo. Now let's move on to five and six. So the most common type of fibrous protein that is found inside our body, for example, it's found in bone, it's found in skin, and it's generally found in the areas surrounding our cells, so the extracellular environment, this fibrous protein, as you might know, is collagen. But collagen must be activated from its pro-enzyme form, from its zymogen form, and the zymogen form is known as pro-collagen. In fact, this leads us directly into six. We have another enzyme known as collagenase, which is actually responsible for activating the pro-collagen into collagen. 
And so uh, uh, collagenase is the enzyme that catalyzes the cleavage of peptide bonds in collagen. And this can either actually activate that collagen molecule or it can break down that collagen molecule and destroy that collagen structure. And this process is important in remodeling of the extracellular environment as well as the development of the embryo. So collagenase can be used to activate collagen as well as break down collagen during the process of the, uh, embryological devel uh, development as well as the remodeling of the extracellular environment. And just like collagen exists in a zymogen form we call procollagen, uh, collagenase also exists in a zymogen form called procollagenase. So we have all these different types of enzymes found inside our body which depend on proteolytic activation to actually be activated and to exist in their fully functional form. And in the next several lectures, we're going to focus on digestive enzymes as well as blood clotting enzymes.